so I'll be um, uh, explaining how to use Uniswap and Suave together. Uh, Suave is a platform from Flashbots uh, to do confidential computation and have private data storage uh, catered towards MEV use cases. I'll explain all of this shortly. Reasons to use Suave. Uh, right now, there's a lot of applications that utilize whitelists, so like running off-chain auctions for state accesses. I won't name any of the specific ones, um, but you know this this really isn't like the DeFi ideal in many cases that we had imagined, uh, sort of these lists that we hold on private servers and you may or may not have access. Um, so we're hoping Suave can help fix that. Um, remove or reduce staking requirements. So there's some examples of solver platforms that um, are unable to um, sort of like protect or properly enforce um, uh, like correct behavior. So they like resort to slashing and in some of the most popular uh, cases of this, like in solving for example, uh, there's like over 100K uh, USD requirements to stake in order to participate. And so using a like credible computation platform where we can sort of ensure uh, that a solution you had submitted is correct and obeys the rules of the protocol, we can actually lower staking requirements um, and therefore creating a more competitive market. Um, cheap proofs. So um, right now, I, I think everyone's exploring ZK proofs, um, stuff like FHE, uh, MPC, all some of those are more uh, multi-party computation as opposed to like a proof platform. Um, we eventually hope to migrate Suave towards uh, one of these new technologies, but the idea is right now that we use an SGX or trusted execution environment to sign off on computation, uh, and that's basically extremely cheap, uh, and we'll get into that. Um, and then assure users, so um, everything is basically uh, basically, Suave exists as like code deployed on these SGX machines, uh, and uh, you can basically ensure that people are running auctions fairly. If you've ever heard of the credible auctioneer problem, um, one example right now is the DOJ is suing Google for manipulating ad auctions, um, and there's something like 30% increased revenue because not only are they the auctioneer, but they also set your bidding strategies, and so they're able to basically uh, inflate profits. Um, cool. So, yeah. So, uh, at Flashbots, we've had a couple MEV applications. Um, we have Flashbots Protect, we have MevShare. There's been various other protocols that have come online to handle MEV and MEV redistribution. Um, but each of them, and like, we can even zoom into MevShare. MevShare has about like four parameters how much a user gets refunded. Uh, on their MEV, what is the distribution of the refunds? Like, say, a searcher extracts 0.5 ETH. Uh, how much does the searcher get? They actually did work. How much does the protocol get? How much does the user get? Maybe there's even another party involved. Um, so there's all these parameters. Um, and also, we have this model of programmable privacy, where, uh, say, you send a swap to one of these platforms, you can purposefully leak subsets of the information to searchers. Um, the less you leak, the harder it is to search on it, and so the big question is like, where is the privacy efficiency frontier? Um, and this is all to basically say, there are many, many, many MEV application designs, and every person is basically rewriting from the ground up their own like private servers to handle these things. So in that sense, like Suave is designed as an open marketplace for MEV applications, which we call SWAPs, uh, Suave applications. Um, some examples of existing MEV applications include private RPCs, order flow auctions, block builders, relays, shared sequencers, and basically whatever you could imagine. Um, here's roughly what Suave looks like. So um, basically, if you're, who here is familiar with SGX? Okay, okay, two, two raises, okay. So, um, SGX is basically a type of hardware designed by Intel where they essentially bake the private key into the hardware on its construction. And then if you've ever seen, uh, you know, someone tried to, like, uh, the, the like uh, bank robbery deterrence where they have uh, sort of like ink inside the money. So when you steal it, it basically ruins the money uh, and gives away that you stole the money. Uh, that's sort of how an SGX works. If you try and pry it open, you actually ruin the device and uh, it's, un it's no longer usable. And so yes, we're essentially placing a lot of trust in Intel because they're putting these private keys in at manufacturing. 
But um, there's arguments that uh, Intel is very incentive aligned with this design because uh, we're basically driving more people to purchase SGX. Um, it would be a very weird end game if they wanted to control all private keys and then suddenly just like rug everyone. It's probably much less money than they make just from selling you know, chips like they normally do. Um, so yeah, uh, Suave is basically a network of these SGX nodes. Um, SGX is also a subset of uh, something called uh, trusted execution environments, or TEEs. So we call a node a kettle. It's a tea kettle. It's a little joke. Um, and so, yeah, so the nodes on the network are called kettles. They run on this trusted hardware. And they also have access to um, ETH L1 state that is also located on SGX hardware. Uh, the user then interacting with their front end will have some type of order flow. Maybe it's a transaction, maybe it's an EIP 712 message. They encrypt it to the, the public key associated with this trusted hardware, and then they send it there. And this is how you ensure that uh, no one can basically like, you know, monitor your order flow in the middle, try and steal it and put it on chain before and like front run you. Um, and then the second thing to point out is that um, the swab network, these kettles can put out both bundles and blocks. So if you're unfamiliar with what a bundle is, um, right now there's about eight block builders on the Ethereum network. Um, the main units of like, uh, the main unit that they, they, they work on in order to create these uh, blocks are bundles. And this is basically, you can send in three transactions in a bundle, and you're basically specifying, I want this to go into the slot, into the block, and in the in this three orders. Um, and so you can think of back running as an example, where you have a swap, and then you also have the back run on the swap. Um, so the swap leaves a pool um, mispriced with another pool. A searcher then creates a back run, which uh, arbs this pool back, and they, they want them to go together because if someone else is inserted in the middle of that, they might lose out on the arbitrage opportunity. So that's, it's basically they want these two or nothing. Um, cool. So Swap provides three core benefits to MEV applications. The first is um, private data storage. And I'm going to show in a bit a, uh, a little bit more of a zoomed in diagram um, on how these actually interact in a kettle. Um, but so private data storage, um, so your MEV application on Suave has access to a place where you can store encrypted information and then also process encrypted information when you upload a program to Suave, such as a MEV application. Um, confidential computation, that was the second part as I just alluded to. You can basically put a program on there, it operates on this private data and ideally it leaks no information out. Although you can design a MEV application to purposefully leak information, there are use cases for that. And then sub ETH L1 coordination time is a little bit of a marketing term. Uh, it's, it's essentially, we do have a chain uh, on these uh, suave kettles, um, but uh, it's, it's much shorter and then also a lot of the computation is done off chain. So um, you, you can basically, pro you can coordinate uh, ETH L1 activity faster than ETH uh, L1. Um, so yeah, the private data storage utilizes the confidential data store. Um, and basically, the key here is that swaps define the shape and operations of performed on user data. Um, the kettles transfer this confidential data between each other um, so that if you hit one, you can still uh, do the second part of your computation potentially another one. Uh, data modeling, so you can include anything, uh, transactions, user ops, 712 messages, bundles, simulation results, intermediate values, partial and full blocks, if you wanted to do maybe like a shared sequencer, uh, and social security number, just kidding, don't put that on there. <laughs> um, it, it points out though that you could put a social security on the number on there, um, but if you're familiar with like the hacks that have gone on with SGX, you should sort of assume there's one like every two years, and so, um, and maybe that'll get larger. But the idea is we are running uh, auctions on this platform. And so if you run an auction and suddenly all your bids get leaked a year later, it's not really a big deal. Whereas if you put your social security on there, number on there, that's definitely a big deal. Um, cool, and then access control. So when you put confidential data in the confidential data store, you actually specify which programs are allowed to operate on your data like explicitly. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about like accidentally giving you know access to uh, like some builder who will just start front running you left and right. Um, confidential computation utilizes the Suave chain and confidential compute requests. So Suave chain is you can think of it as a marketplace. Uh, well, I said that earlier. You can think of it sort of like the App Store, right? In that. When you go to the app store on your phone, you download an app and then you start running it locally. Maybe it makes you know, calls to a cloud, but let's ignore that for now. Um, so in this sense, that's exactly what we use the Suave chain for, is that you upload Solidity contracts to Suave with some additional pre-compiles to do like, cool things, like simulating bundles or maybe sending it to a block builder. Um, and then, um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so you, you upload these to the Suave chain and all of the kettles keep in sync with the latest contracts. And when you do a computation, it basically uses your program on the Suave. It uses the program from the Suave chain, but it doesn't do the computation on chain. But you can define in your Suave application to push something back to the chain. So if you, uh, one example of this is, um, uh, there's, there's this like thing uh, where it's actually more efficient if you're making like a crazy large trade, like 100 million or something. We saw this on CowSwap, an example of this, where some DAO was like dumping a very large amount of tokens and they got a very subpar price because they just tried to dump it all at once. And like the, the idea is there weren't uh, buyers of the tokens like ready to come in and buy it. So if you sort of announce like two days ahead of time, like, hey, I'm gonna sell these tokens, then you sort of incentivize the market to be like, okay, there's going to be this big sell event, and now we can go buy it if the uh, you know if if that's the case. That's maybe not for all tokens. Um, and then lastly would be a confidential compute request, which is a new transaction type to um, basically define uh, how this computation is performed. Uh, and we can get. I'm happy to get into the weeds another time on how this works if you're um, working on a swap. Um, and then sub ETH L1 coordination time. So again, although the programs are on chain, you're not actually executing them on chain and needing to go through consensus in order to output it. Um, and so yeah, this is how we bring it all together. Also, I'm realizing this is like quite hard to see, so apologies for that. Um, so yes, yeah, so we can see a swap dev, maybe you, they upload programs to the chain. Um, inside of the kettle, we have something called the MEVM. It's a modified version of the EVM, which basically gives you access to this confidential data store. Um, and then as well, we maybe have some ETH L1 state. So say you wanted to control something about your swap based on what the underlying pool looks like on ETH L1. You can actually query L1 from the smart contract and then do some logic based off of it. Um, and again, in this example, you can output a bundle. Um, so some quick ideas. Uh, I'm just going to run through these. So um, you can do dynamic fees, such as an MCAMM or a DMCAMM. These are E3 search posts. Definitely check them out. I don't have time to explain all of them. Um, there's, there's essentially the idea is in most pools that have high volume, the first transaction in the block is an arbitrager. So you can essentially auction off the first transaction in a pool uh, on Suave. And so Suave will spit out a signed message, and you as the arbitrager need to present that signed message in order to be the first one to swap. And the idea is the pool would then charge you a higher fee. And so this is how you could integrate something like a, a, the before hook in Uni v4. Um, yeah, you could also tag your order flow with like proofs or like maybe a reputation proof, an NFT. A cool idea would be like use Axiom and create some type of like proof of your trading history and like show that you were, you know, always treating LPs uh, very fairly. Therefore, you should get a good fee. Um, and then ac active liquidity balancing, that's sort of been around for a while. Oh, no. Oh, cool. I thought I kicked something. Uh, okay, side quest LVR, we won't do that. Um, some Gort. Tweets, check out Gort on Twitter. Um, yeah, so LVR minimization and redistribution. Um, I'll skip over most of these. We already talked about the first access auction. Um, an LVR Oracle in Suave would be really cool, where basically you can, you can LP in Uniswap, but then you could also have uh, preferences on Suave, where say, like, if it's high volatility, 
I'm happy to actually take prices in this range. If it's low volatility, I'd rather take a price in this range, and that's much more like expressive than what you can currently do on the ETH L1 chain, and for much cheaper. Um, payment for order flow is another fun idea. So you could basically sell the rights to uh, arbitrage a pool for like an entire month, or fill all of the orders in a pool for the entire month by staking and making some commitment that you're always going to fill a user's trade uh, like 20 bips above what the underlying L1 AMM price curve gives you at any given time. So the example of that would be, you know, a user trade comes in, um, someone then, you know, you uh, submitted these preferences, which would then try and fill the trade, um, and you would fill it at a price 20 bips higher than the L1 pool by querying the L1 pool and then uh, giving the best price you can. And then maybe you could sl slash someone if they uh, misbehave retroactively. Um, lastly, intents and RFQs. So you could just send RFQ uh, intents into Suave. Any of the current intent designs work. So there's um, user ops are sort of like intents. They're not exactly like intents. Um, there's also the Enoma intents design, which is really cool. I'd check that out. Um, there's also the essential intents design, which is super cool as well. So you could basically just send intents into Suave and have a program that combines them and then spits out a swap on L1. Um, yeah. So that's, that's like mostly what you can do with Suave. Here's again a QR code to the um, docs. And then I'll just quickly go through our prizes a bit. Um, so yeah, best intent Uniswap design and POC. Uh, up to two teams can receive $1,000 for this. Um, so we have some heavy caveats on, on using Uniswap. Uh, or uh, sorry, Suave. Um, it's still a you know in beta platform, and so um, if your prototype doesn't exactly work, but you have most of the design, uh, that also can like qualify for these things. And especially if you identify a reason why something doesn't work, then that's extremely valuable to us as well. And so we're happy to uh, you know still give you a prize. Um, best PPOF design and POC, as we as I just previously got into, that's a fifteen hundred dollar prize. Um, best Uniswab LVR design and POC. We have three for this. This is like a really rich design space. Um, I would check out some talks on LVR, or I'm happy to get into that later. Um, but essentially, LVR is the framing of like why LPs don't make as much as on you know on chain as they do being like market makers on a centralized exchange. So this is like one of the most important problems in crypto. Um, best use of Suave is then also two point. Uh, 5k and there's up to three winners of that and that can just be anything you want uh, you could even share Netflix you could do a sh sharing Netflix password uh, application uh, someone actually the other day built a extra data auction so you can actually sell on the eth execution blocks there's an ex extra data field where you can put uh, arbitrary text someone made an auction where you can basically bid on the next blocks extra data and it's already live on Gurley. And then lastly, best use of UniV4 um, hooks as well. And so any, anything in that regime. Cool. And that is time. That's all I got. Um, yeah, I will be around and happy to answer any and all questions. Happy hacking. <laughs>